Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Eloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hoppenskip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Wildermyth, the Age of Ulstrix. As we continue our ongoing efforts to bring an end to the Gorgon's Reign of Terror, I'm actually pretty sure we're going to wrap this up today. This is just the tutorial campaign. It's only a three-chapter structure, so the enemies aren't going to become nearly as powerful as they would in a full five-chapter arc. But this is all laying foundation for potential future stories. That's a big part of how Wildermyth is structured. You're essentially creating a multiverse of overlapping stories. So I am hoping to do at least uh, one or two more campaigns. Anyway. Cloak of Chivalry plus armor. This late in the campaign, we'd want that to go to someone who can make immediate use of it. Which I guess would be Trip. Oh, and a Feather Steel Brooch, plus speed. Well, the characters who could make the most use out of that already have Brooch items, and equipping them with a new one would just destroy the previous one, which is wasteful. So, again, I guess we'll just toss that to Trip. Sharp Dragon Timberland. Xanon's Tower. Right, 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 right. I should have uh, taken the extra day or so to to get them grouped up before they went in there. Ambushes can be some of the deadliest events in the game if you're not prepared for them. But you're safe from them as long as you travel in groups of three or more. Oh, yeah, we should be fine. Thankfully, it's just lower tier enemies. We'll have Trip finish the first raccoon. Wow, nice. He could have dropped that thing himself. Okay, now let's do the Rager. That'll conveniently keep us behind cover, too, so the other raccoon will have a much harder time landing a hit. Yeah, that works too. Light hit on red. Nothing to worry about. Let's wrap this up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, that's the uh, real downside here. Even though we stomped that ambush, it still gives the enemy faction an upgrade card. Not a huge deal just yet, since we've been pretty good about managing time thus far. But we will want to be slightly more careful moving forward. Grabbing a few more mushrooms? Hmm? Oh, uh, no. I was looking for a decent feather. For a, a passing breeze of fancy. It, it's not important. She says, thinking that will appease Kaz. We snag what little bits of comfort we can in a world gone awry. Some people pray to gods, some carry totems and talismans. And on the edge of a battle, sometimes I like to make my own little appeals to fate. Have you always done this? Not always. But when the crickets have that extra quaver in their songs, you don't ignore it. Aha! Uh -huh. First, I gather the bits. Gotta have the bits. A feather for speed, a pebble for strength, and a bit of moss for wisdom. What does moss have to do with wisdom? You know of something that would fit better? There. Then I make a short appeal for each person. They don't need to hear it themselves. They would only put them on the spot, start them overthinking. But I feel better having spoken it to the forest. The forest may not take suggestions, but you plant the seed just in case anything out there is in a listening mood. Satisfied with a recently pocketed feather, Lula heads back towards camp. Hmm. Well, Kaz isn't much for these sorts of rituals, so I'll leave you to it. Some moments are just for ourselves. I think it's a very nice thing to do, though. Not everybody would put in the thought. I'll tell the forest as much tonight. Tell it Lula is the real deal, and that it'd do well to listen to you. Hope I haven't created a ritual obligation for you now, too. Nah. When the cricket songs quaver, then I'll know. Hey, and there's our mystical blessing, courtesy of Lula. And we've got a stone spirit up for grabs. Let's bring someone up. There could be enemies right around the corner. Well, not right around the corner, but yes. That would be something to plan around. Oh, yep, yep. That is slightly more daunting. The spirit just trapped itself in a dead-end room, so that'll make it a whole lot easier to catch up with. Two raccoons. We'll neutralize them before we grab the spirit. We have three rounds before it fades. There's no, no reason to overextend.
Geist is down. Oh shoot, I didn't even notice the Rager in there. Alright, let's push the Bartok before it sets us up the bomb. Talks down. Let's clear the raccoons. Hmm. Spell first. If I had rushed Kaz in, he would have been right in that blast zone. But now we can safely collect our spirit. Come on, little guy. Let's go wandering. Stone enchants are great for any range-type weapon. They shred and pin all enemies in a wide radius on crit. Which, in the case of things like wands, will also extend to any spells you cast. Hey, and we got a new achievement. Though that is pure vanity. That doesn't actually have any tangible in-game effect. There are challenges that will unlock new customization options. We just haven't actually gotten to those yet. Two row. And there's Vigilance. That will allow Sir Gizlane to take multiple guard attacks per round. Poison. Interesting. Though we're not really set up for it. That's best used by characters with one-handed weapons for convenience. But, um... No, we're not dropping Gizlane's shield. He gets too much use out of that. We'll just toss it off to Dracoth. She might get some use out of it in a future life. Let's keep moving. We're making decent time here. Another incursion. Not ideal. They're passing through two territories. We didn't finish reinforcing. But uh, we'll we'll get the B team on that. Stormflint scarf plus potency. Yeah, we'll toss that to Rangar. Might as well give the poor guy something. Oh, 
Crud, we have another incursion on this side, too. Gorgon polar bears, that's fun. But let's um, push that back for now. We've been walking for hours. The light has faded to dusk. I think we're going in circles. I swear I've seen that tree before. I'm not sure I like this. Did you hear that? That was just you, stepping on a twig. I guess that's what it was. Come on, let's go this way. Try to watch your step, twig stomper. Suddenly, the path widens, spilling out into a large clearing bathed in starlight. This music, it calls to me. We should join them. Join them? That seems like a profoundly bad idea. They have no faces. Oh, yeah, definitely. This is a rare event, so I will absolutely take advantage of it, if we are guaranteed success. Let us dance among the stones. Come on. I've got two left feet. I'm better as an audience member. As soon as Lula steps between the stones, music washes over her. Unlike anything she's ever heard before, and yet, its melodies seem familiar. Were not these the drums always beating in time with her heart? Had she not always found herself absently humming this tune? She flows among them, a beam of starlight woven with the others. There is a moment when the whirling comes to a nearly frenzied pace, when the dancers are spinning and spinning, orbiting, and nearly carried away. Around her, the specters cry out in adulation. Lula hears her own voice joining them. With a crashing crescendo, the music falls suddenly silent. A voice like water trickling over stone speaks. You honor me well, Lula. She stands silent, humbled and awed. At her feet, something blue glimmers, a small book worn with age. For a moment, the constellations on its cover sparkle. Then it lies quiet and still, waiting. Finally, Lula emerges from the stone circle. Lula, you're back. I'm sorry I was gone for so long, but that was amazing. You were gone for like 10 seconds. You just walked into the circle, shouted some unintelligible words, and then came back out. But the specters vanished right after you went near them. Look, I was given this book. What do the symbols mean? I have no idea, but I know I've seen them before. Can we just get out of here before any more faceless dancing creatures reappear? So I go, but part of my soul will always be here. Nice. That's our first transformation event, and one of the very rare ones that lets you choose who gets the transformation. So I am going to have to give that some thought. Morgloth's Wounded Hill. Let's push the B team for the Book of Stars.
We found this book full of constellations and strange writing. Someone needs to dedicate some time to focus on translating the Book of Stars. I mean, we did find Rangar in a library. It makes sense he'd be our resident researcher. Plus, uh, I think he'd actually be a good fit for the star powers. I would give it to Lula, but I've actually got something different in mind for her. If we can ever get the associated events to trigger. At any rate, we are actually almost done here. Let's uh, tie up these last few loose ends, then we'll hit that story tile. Just doing a little damage control. Long days and nights pass as Rangar combs through the library. He pours over ancient tomes, their pages crumbling with age and ink faded with time. Unfurls scrolls that crackle and split, no matter how carefully they are unrolled. At long last, the coat is unraveled. The cryptic lines revealed. This is it. Aha, I knew it. I knew I'd seen these symbols before. At the next desk over, Dracoth shakes herself awake and lifts her head. Did you say something? I found it. I knew I'd seen these symbols in a book we have here. It was obviously in Astrea's Esoterica Arcana, Volume 23A. Obviously. So, you know what it means now? <laughs> Not at all, but I'm close. Now comes the fun part, translating it line by line and cross-referencing these other books. We have very different ideas of fun. I'm going to go see what the others are up to. Good luck with your star stuff and scribbles. Yeah, this might take a while. Today, glimmering pot. No, glimmering pool. Into the glimmering pool. That's, that's it. It's done. And it seems to be a map to a place called the glimmering pool. Oh, nice. And it's right here. That's convenient. Oh, we need a third. I guess we'll just have Trip go with. Not a big deal. He'll be able to get back to the main party the fastest. That's fine, we'll fix that. True Gorgon's coming in. We took one out in Chapter 1, so I think we're okay with that. We're almost there. This is the Luminous Stream, according to the Book of Stars. The locals called it the Babbling Brook. Are you sure we're in the right place? Of course I am. 
Yesterday we found the split rock exactly where the book said it would be. And today we watched the sunrise on the first day of the new moon cast the rock's shadow in this direction. I still can't believe you got me up before dawn. According to the book, we should see... The Celestial Falls. It's beautiful. Worth getting up at dawn for? I mean, they'd still be here if we'd slept in. What's your silly book say next? Now we climb. The pool is at the top of these falls. And so they do, pulling themselves up the moss-covered rocks, slipping on mist moist and stone. Until, finally... Nice view from up here. This is it. This is what we came for? It's just a small pond. The book says, When stars above are mirrored in the pool, then shall you drink of her glory. And that means... We wait for nightfall, for the hour of her domain. The setting sun slips behind the mountains, and night blankets the countryside in deep purples and blues. The stars begin to come out, tiny silver pinpoints in the darkening sky. Slowly, the pool begins to glow. All right, I must admit, that's pretty spectacular. Now what? Now one of us goes in. There's enough power to grant one of us something special. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's got to be Rangar. I think the recent update made this more of a mage thing, so he's definitely the best suited. Well, here goes. Hmm. I don't think anything... My god, it's full of stars! So that sets the seed of a new transformation in Rangar. But we won't actually get to enjoy the full transformation until he returns for a future campaign. It takes time for that stuff to set in, and we're right near the end of this campaign. For now, he just gains the passive Blinding Attack ability, which adds a chance to blind on all of his spells and physical attacks. That'll give him a slight edge when he inevitably returns for the next campaign. That said, I think we're just about ready to embark upon the final leg of this campaign. Let's get the B-team back on rebuilding and securing. And yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and meet up with the mysterious Arnon. That should unlock the final story location. The rain hasn't let up much through the fall. The earth is soggy and stinking like a corpse. Hills have sunk and dead mites float in flooded fields. People are moving towards the mountains. Going by Arnon's map, we're nearly there. This won't be our last fight. Now's when we find out whether we're hooked fish or heroes. I've heard it said that to cut a noose is to gain a dangerous friend. The Gorgons are swarming these days, choking us, drowning us. This whole world is near its limit. Any chance may be the only chance. Starting to throw some heavy hitters at us here. 
but we're still ahead of the curve, so we should be okay. That's really what a lot of the uh, difficulty management in Wildermyth comes down to. Enemies will steadily grow stronger and more numerous over time. But as long as you keep moving, you should be okay. If you end up burning too much time on frivolous stuff, though, then you can fall behind the curve, and it very quickly becomes a problem, which can be difficult, if not impossible, to recover from. Especially once you start losing limbs, or the uh, heroes that they're attached to. Also note, we're almost entirely up against ranged enemies this time, which does limit my normal defense as the best offense sort of approach. Morgan's pin with their range attack, so we'll want to be careful here. The last thing we need is for one of our guys to get stuck out in the open so they can all focus fire. Uh, speaking of which... Kaz's armor is completely gone, so he is now incredibly vulnerable. Let's try to uh, slow down the Gorgons, and we'll, we'll clear the raccoons. Nice. One more. Then we'll have Sir Gizlane and Trip intercept. Nice, nice. Star Slate Knee Pads. Plus warding. Well, we could definitely use more warding. Gizlane is our designated tank. 
but we should really bump up Lula and Kaz too, as opportunities present themselves. They are way too vulnerable to magic damage. Well, that was a healthy shake. Got my back. May not be done fighting. Arnon emerges rather suddenly from a damp shadow, standing before a root-framed tunnel. So, you made it. You doubted we would? The old deepest leads them into the dark. The earth walls are slimy and black. Streams of water slosh on either side of a hastily heaped gravel path. Clods plop from the ceiling. Support beams have clearly been rushed into place. Don't take any offward tunnel. They've been falling in. Deeper in, earth walls give way to granite. The warren rots. The flowing water follows carven channels away from the main tunnel to some dark end. When will you abandon this place? Hmm? No, oh, no, we can't. Do you want breakfast? It's mid-afternoon. Ah, but we're not chained to the sun cycle. We have breakfast whenever. Yeah, that does sound pretty great. Arnon shows the way inside a marked passage. A weird smell beckons them through. To the other side. Here they are, dear. The badger and the brute. And more to follow. Bleh. Well, did you offer them Grum? Sure I did. No one wants lukewarm, chewy old Grum, I keep saying. What's that smell? Breakfast? Damp feet is my guess. Mulch tea? Moai, adventurers. This is some drunk I know. Yes, I'm Velda. It said I was born in the basin of a dried caldera to spirits of the salt and rock. Does get said a lot, but not actually true. Right, technically it's false. You two are married to each other? We're mostly married. In times of strife, it's nice. Can we stop pretending we're at a picnic? The brute speaks reasoned language. You came because you must defeat the Gorgons, is that right? We were told you knew how. I know what the Gorgons did. Their leader. I learned of him. Ulstrix. Arnon tucks into a bowl of beige mush. Looks like shroomy gruel with some kind of green gold dressing. Hmm. Ulstrich. Hmm. We know the name well enough. Yes, Ulstrix. Raised a great number of his brethren. And they went to the valley of the god beast, Moatona. Well, that's the uh, same god that uh, the keeper of the Pool of Revisions mentioned. The one she tried to kill, and as punishment for doing so... She was condemned to guard the pool. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice callback. And of the great god beast, they made pewter. Yeah, that's not great. Velda gazes on all attending from beneath the massive horns adorning her face. A scowl twists her already crooked features. Arnon finishes his mail, pulls at his beard, and wipes it on his cowl. Who? Moatona. Moatona is an ancient one, a keeper of balance. The unassailable balance of Moatona keeps all opposing forces of this world in harmony. And because Moatona's dead, that throws off the weather? And the seas, and the peaks... All will turn into a big blue gorgon soup. 
Us, the carrots and beans. And you, the onions. So that's why Ulstrix needed this army, to slay a god. But what was the point of that spear we bled over? Wasn't that supposed to be the symbol he needed? To unite whatever Gorgons behind his crusade? What matters is this. Moatona cannot die. She's petrified. The reason I called you here is that I've been hoarding a certain restorative spirit, distilled from the roots of the extinct Bullflax flower. I call it... Root Beer. Oh, do you? Um, medicine? My root beer should be able to restore the great Moatona, if you can get it to her. My brewing goddess, Velda. Well, assuming all that's true, why us? Don't you have your own lackeys? The deep down sum of it is, we're afraid, so our people are made frail. Water's the worst doom. The Gorgon leader is strong and fearless. So too are his hordes. We are too old, slow. I'm scared to die. The Gorgons aren't going to let us do this thing, are they? And do we know where to go? And are we sure reviving this god beast will fix everything? The badger grows quite hasky, but... I'll answer all your questions. Over breakfast, I'm still hungry. It's salty warm. Yes, delicious, thank you. Velda is true to her word, and as Arnon serves up bowls of grum, she draws a serviceable map upon the wall in pale chalk. The food is surprisingly good. Lastly, Velda hands over her healing ale, a single, sealed, earthenware bottle. Soon, they're on their way again. They carry the hopes of all the land and its creatures in one fragile bottle. No pressure, right? And this is it. The way to our final destination is clear. Though I suppose we still have a few loose ends here. We're not going to worry about defenses at this point. We'll just uh, finish rebuilding that last site, grab that loot up top, and then push the assault. One last upgrade for the baddies. We'll nix this one. Just need to pass some time to grab this item. Then I think we're good. Low-tier hunter armor. Oh, which is an upgrade for Lula. Okay, okay. We'll, uh, we'll take it. I really should have upgraded that sooner. And a gravel pelt ring, plus armor. Which, unfortunately, we would not get any actual benefit from. 
I guess Rangar can keep it. A hillside cave serves as their final campsite. I'm proud to stand with you, Gorgon Slayers. I'm proud to defy the end, here among my friends, the greatest heroes I know. Be sure of your gear. This is the last sleep. We'll be prepared. And now it's time for last minute upgrades, which is why it was important to get those places up and running right before we hit this final location. Maxing out weapons is probably our highest priority. Ooh, no, we're, we're not doing that. Sorry, Trip, that is way too expensive. We'll upgrade Lula's armor. That uh, tier 1 armor we just gave her does actually apply a discount for upgrading to tier 2. So we did get something out of it. Yep, and that's it. We are completely tapped. We do have 10 legacy points left, but I am saving those. That'll let us upgrade one extra hero post-campaign. Alright, here we go. The Valley of the God Beast, Moetona. We knew we were set up for an unwinnable fight. Even in the relentless rain... It was a beautiful place to die. You hear how love is stronger than a river, than a rain, more boundless than an ocean. I've believed in the truth of that, but today... A desperate flame, that's us. I feel a little joyful, to be honest. We might burn out, sure, but all our foes will blow to ash beneath us. Quiet would serve us well here. The sky grieves, the woods and stones. Moetona, what are we to you? A clear path climbs the hill ahead of them. To whatever awaits. Stagron. At the raising of those mighty arms, its clamoring kin run before it. Which means this is slightly misleading. There are going to be extra row. But uh, it's actually not all that bad. It would be a whole lot worse if we had dragged our feet during earlier parts of the campaign. Let's punch a hole. Pretty simple so far, but we shouldn't let our guard down. I think there is a second wave at some point. Though I'll uh, also admit it's been a while since I've actually played this scenario.
There's our row and our Geist. So far, so good. Though I will note, Kaz's speed is much lower than I'd like. As uh, time passes, characters naturally grow older, some faster than others. And with each new threshold they hit, they suffer various penalties to their physical attributes. Speed tends to get hit the hardest. I think that's it for the first wave. Now we just push up on the statue. Yeah, yeah, it looks clear. Lula, now's the time. Look at this thing. Were you really around all this time? Climbing up its slick neck. Lula unseals Velda's earthenware bottle. Just gonna pour it on the thing? Don't see a pour hole. She douses the petrified head of the god beast Moatona in the spicy sweet smelling elixir. It's not working, is it? Ah, oh, well. We're out of time. Ulstrix. He's here. I would have fought and clawed, kicked and bit, down to my last breath, and passed it if I could. Ulstrix and I were both that way, maybe. When the first land was raised from the folds of the sea, two worlds were born out of one. To Ulstrix, a mighty and arrogant Gorgon hero, this was creation's mistake, and he dreamed he'd mend it. Very little has ever been known of the things that scrum and scoil beneath black waves. We know the Gorgons are old, old. so maybe they aren't easily moved. My vanity hopes we threw him some surprises. But it's possible we were his fools from the very beginning. We unpuzzled the stone and chased that spear of petroglass. We struck a blow, I think, in taking it. But our grubbing plunder of a Gorgon heirloom gave him a story to tell. Our species cast as the scrabbling villains. Incited, his Gorgon brethren together rose behind him to impute her this gentle god. And the ocean rose while the rain fell, and the ice of the world turned to melt. For a while, I'm sure he believed his dream would replace reality. The rain stops. But it won't.
Ulstrix. This mighty lord of Gorgon, scarred and strong, hurls his underlings before him and raises himself high, prepared to fight. Plus additional cannon fodder. Now, Ulstrix himself is a bit of a ways back. So let's knock out these closer mobs first. Nice hits. Drop the Gorgon. Thank you, Lula. Then we'll just get set up for the Bogmore. Oh, hi. I think Ulstrix actually did throw that row at us. Oh, right, and we do have infinite reinforcements on this one, so we don't want to hang back too much. We actually need to take the fight to Ulstrix. So he, he does hurl his minions, but they also take damage from it. I'm not sure how hard this guy hit, so let's hedge our bets. More incoming. Okay, okay, that wasn't bad. Though uh, it would have taken a chunk out of him if we hadn't armored up.
Oh. Sorry, Alstrix. Your reign of terror has come to an end. See you later. Level up for Trent. And we will, of course, grab Thornfang. That's a nice little perk for his next life. The mighty Alstrix finally crumpled before us. His reeking corpse twitched still. It was over. Some would say we saved the world. And we did save the ember of it. We cupped this red coal of life, held it away from the water, carried it into the next morning. Through wreckage, loss, destruction. It would take time for the water to go down, the memories to lose their bite, to rebuild, to heal, and maybe to live new lives someday. But our story was just one of many. <laughs> the end. And thus the Age of Ulstrix comes to an end. The first of six pre-written campaigns, I believe. Each one focused on a different foe. And, uh, Obviously the easiest one. This one was, as I stated, essentially a glorified three-chapter tutorial. The subsequent campaigns become progressively more challenging, and uh, in some cases a lot more involved, story-wise. And uh, I would like to get to them all eventually, though of course that will that'll depend on how much people want to see me continue this series. I will say, though, it would be a shame to leave it off on just this one. We've, um, we've only just barely established our heroic legacy, the stable of heroic characters who will carry over from one story to another. Though, of course, each new story would also have additional new heroes as well. A big part of Wildermyth is seeing how your heroes change and evolve from one story to the next. Anyway, let's uh, roll credits. Enjoy some nice epilogues. We'll chat after. Thank you.
Lovely. I would have read some of those epilogues out loud, but it's a, a very pleasant end song. I didn't want to talk over it. These seven become our first additions to our fledgling mythos. And uh, the way that works is that each of these characters is now part of a pool of characters who can potentially be tapped for special events or recruiting events or even special introductions to future campaigns. They won't be exactly the same characters, though. It's, it's kind of a multiverse thing. If and when these characters do reappear, they'll retain their appearance, their basic character details, their class, and certain items like artifacts and elemental gear. But most other things will be reset. They'll lose their trinkets, they'll be level 1, their age will be reset so they can grow old again. But what we're doing right now is promoting characters in our legacy, by promoting a character, you allow them to retain more of their innate power when they reappear in a future campaign. Instead of appearing as a level 1 character, they'll appear as a level 2 character, albeit uh, with, a, with a slightly heftier investment of legacy points required to bring them back into play. It's a fun system. It lets you see familiar faces, continue evolving or transforming characters who have been afflicted in various ways. And of course, to... Uh, do kind of a soft reset on their build, if you're not happy with the way they turned out the first time around. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the way our characters turned out, but uh, in retrospect, I might have tweaked Trip a little just to make sure he got rogue. But now that's something we can look at the next time he pops into a campaign. Though I will say uh, I'll probably show a preference for characters who didn't get much screen time when it comes to returning heroes. So, you know, more Drakith, more Rangar. Give those two a chance to shine. As opposed to uh, just doing perpetual cleanup behind the A-team. At any rate, that's pretty much it. The Age of Ulstrix comes to an end. The uh, Enduring War awaits. Though I'm not sure exactly when we'll get to that one. I do want to do it, but it's really going to come down to where I can fit it into my schedule. And we do have some other higher priority projects in the wings. That said, feel free to let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more sooner rather than later. And of course, also uh, be sure to vote in the monthly interest polls. Those help me decide which projects to prioritize. I do still have that waiting list, and we've got dozens of heroes I would love to introduce into other continuities. Also, feel free to uh, leave any other comments you might have. I know Wildermyth doesn't appeal to everyone, though I personally find it fascinating. Regardless, we'll uh, hit the pause button for now. Wildermyth will continue someday. So I guess I will see you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wildermyth, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. As always, links are in the description.